Hello everyone, how's it going? And welcome to my Wild Rift tier list for patch 4.2a. Surprisingly, there were quite a lot of changes in this patch. A lot of small adjustments to some champions and obviously a lot of changes to some of the items, especially to do with the AD carry roles. So AD carry in general has changed ever so slightly. As for all the other roles, most of them have stayed pretty much exactly the same. I've actually added a new jungler into the tier list. So if you want to skip to any point of the video, timestamps are in the description and let's head straight into it. First, let's talk about the Baron lane. Now, I'm only going to go through the changes of champions that happened this patch. I'm not going to go through every single champion because otherwise it'll be another hour long video. And to be honest, there's so many champions in the game right now. Uh, like I said, most of them have stayed the exact same, but I'll focus on the champions that had some changes and adjustments in patch 4.2a. Uh, first one is Akali. Uh, I'm very surprised that Akali actually got a buff, uh, if I remember, is to her base armor, which actually helps her in the early game. I always say that Akali is fairly weak during the early game, which is very true. She struggles a lot against some of the bruisers and some of the assassins in the early game. But now Akali gaining that base armor in the early game is really, really nice for her. Allows her to sustain up, allows her to freely be able to trade in laning phase and also survive during the early game and then scale up easily into the mid and the late game which is where akali can shine she could be so so strong at two or three items and now i believe her first ability does more damage now so there you go <laughs> more damage for akali uh she still stays in the s plus tier like i said i thought she was already s plus tier before but now she's definitely um in the s plus tier um with the buffs that came in in patch 4.2a uh darius received a little bit of a buff to the uh bleed damage on his passive uh he did receive a little bit of a nerf to uh the jungle monsters but i'll cover that in the jungle section uh but yeah more bleed damage to darius i think darius is pretty decent uh the only problem with darius he, he doesn't really have a lot of ways to try and hook high value targets the only way is you can really use protobelt as a boots enchant you could try and maybe use ghost or something like that as well but sometimes it can be very difficult to try and get onto the back line and try and land a hook or try and get your stacks and then use your ultimate you have to have a lot of beefy frontline champions um when you're playing darius and champions against you um to try and stack it on the front line you try and stack your passive on the front line you try and get a reset and then you could try and flash and maybe land at least one ability on a backline champion and look to ulti them because you'll get four stacks then uh, if you get the reset so Dar darius same spot uh pretty nice buff same spot as what he was before set a little bit of a buff to um his passive his right punch and also uh the second ability just buffing the ad ratio ever so slightly again another champion that i think is totally fine um stick stays in s tier doesn't really change too much i mean the these two champions kind of have the same problem as what they they always have that's why they're not in the uh, s plus tier um so yeah set still pretty good still pretty strong during team fights um Still pretty decent during the laning phase. He actually does quite a decent amount of damage now during the laning phase. Because of the buffs that he received before as well. Uh, to some of his uh, base AD damage. So, Sek could definitely pack a punch in the early game now. I think he is uh, very, very strong during the early game. Uh, Urgot received some buffs as well. Um, again, doesn't really mean too much. Is his ultimate and also his second ability. I believe the AD ratios went up. Um... Urgot's a bit of a weird champion where he doesn't really, he doesn't feel like he does enough really to warrant being a Baron laner. He's kind of like a mix of a damage plus a tank, but sometimes he can't tank up that much damage. And again, he's kind of one of them champions like Darius and Set that can be easily kiteable. It's very difficult to jump on the enemy backline champions. It's very difficult to try and kill the AD carries at the moment, especially with the meta that we're in. So I think Urgot again stays in the same spot, which is A. Uh, Graves received a little bit of uh, buffs as well, uh, but again, Graves in Baron Lane, not as strong as what he used to be. Uh, he's definitely stronger in the jungle now, but some of the buffs that have come in for Graves are definitely very, very nice. Um, with the uh, crit damage now going up um, for the passive and also when you build Infinity Edge. Uh, Pantheon actually seems, received a lot of good changes uh, this patch i still don't think Pantheon is that good though, to be honest with you. I The, the problem with Pantheon is that He's very reliant on his combo, which is like jumping in with your second ability, using your first ability and trying to use your third ability to block damage. When you use that combo, if you don't kill someone, then you're pretty much a sitting duck. Like you, you can't do anything as Pantheon. All your abilities are on cooldown. You can't really do that much. You just jump in. You try and combo someone down. You try and one-shot someone. If you can one-shot someone with Pantheon, that's great. 
but that's where the, kind of the cheese factor comes in for pantheon i think that's where pantheon can be good if you try and cheese someone during the lane phase try and do a really really nice trade or try and you know one shot them and try and do some nice combo damage but most of the time with pantheon it's very difficult to do that um you could try and roam with your ultimate as well try and make an impact on the rest of the map but again you're giving up minions for that in the baron lane so yeah pantheon is in a bit of a weird spot i don't think there's anything wrong with the buffs and how the numbers in general work with pantheon i think it's more to do with the champion itself like what the champion actually brings um which is why i just don't think he's you know that good compared to other baron laners uh and then yoni received a little bit of a nerf uh his base attack speed went down also has some jungle changes but i'll cover that in the jungle section um yoni is a weird one i i don't think yoni is that good in the baron lane maybe the yoni deserves to be like s tier in the baron lane maybe he doesn't i actually i don't think he deserves to be the same tier as like Grey's olaf kennan ergo and pantheon see so yeah, i think ergo uh yoni should definitely move up into um move up into s tier to be honest with you um he, he's still good like he's still very very strong he still has some really really strong items slurry charge blade shield bow even though that got nerfed um divine sundra can also be good and can also be used in the baron lane which is really good against other bruises yeah i think yoni deserves to move up into s tier uh just because of how strong the champion is and what the champion can provide in terms of team fights and also split pushing uh so that's pretty much all the changes in the uh baron lane like i said s plus tier is pretty much exactly the same nothing has changed here all these champions are really really good uh and nothing has changed at the bottom either everything is still kind of the same uh, now moving into jungle jungle has quite a few changes um to it uh you can see already that uh, shadow assassin kane uh, has moved up and if i scroll down ever so slightly you see a new champion there uh which i'll talk about in just a second uh first up yone obviously yone got a nerf to his um second ability this patch uh with the um monster damage on his second ability have been a lot lot lower now in the early game uh which means is that his early jungle clear speed is now not going to be as fast as what it was before his early jungle clear speed is a kind of weak well i'm not kind of it's definitely weaker and it's definitely a lot slower uh but i don't think that that's really a problem for yone i think the way yone does shine is when he gets you know two or three items and most of the time with yone you don't really need fast jungle clear anyway because you don't really want to contest scuttle crabs in the early game if you see the enemy jungler you don't really want to contest that scuttle crab because yone is not very strong at trading in the early game he's not very strong at them early game skirmishes yone is the sort of jungler uh kind of like you know gwen in a way or someone like that or someone like I'm trying to think of other champions that have really good scaling that you can um, that you can do things. Maybe someone like Kane as well because you need your form. You know, champions like that. They don't really want the skirmishes in the early game. You just want to farm up or try and get them cheesy gank, especially with Yoni with his third ability, and try and get advantages through that. You don't want to trade in the early game with the enemy junglers because most of the time you're going to lose the trade. Like I said, the way that Yone shines is his mid and late game when he gets his core items and when he gets a few levels under his, under his belt. And then he can look to be a strong carry with jumping with third ability his ultimate and also a lot of his damage Karzik surprisingly got a buff i mean it was only five damage to his first ability so to be honest it doesn't really mean anything at all but Karzik is in a really really good spot at the moment i think Karzik is very very strong um you don't really build collector on him collector's not really a good item on him I'm trying to think of like any new builds or anything different about Karzik, but he's pretty much the same ghost blade black cleaver dust blade if you really want more damage ga edge of night you know all these items are still really good on Karzik. his jungle clear is still insanely fast um his skirmish potential and also when you get find isolated targets he can one shot enemy carries in the back line he's still a really really strong champion in general and definitely a champion that i would recommend to play because he's quite easy to play and also very very easy carry to play um right moving on down into s tier quite a few changes here uh first up i want to talk about kane now kane in general as a champion it's not even rust or shadow assassin kane kane in general got a huge massive buff this patch you now only need seven thousand souls instead of eight thousand souls to get your upgrade now which i felt to be quite a big difference with kane there's a little strategy that you could do with kane as well you can actually start with uh shimmering spark which is the defensive item for kane and um, this actually gives you a little bit of an advantage in the early game because shimmering spark does damage to um champions and also monsters around you uh which helps the jungle clear ever so slightly but also helps him gain more stacks as well because when he looks to try and gank all he has to do is get 
close to enemy champions and he's going to be dealing a little bit of damage with shimmer and spark so it gets your form quicker and then you can you know sell the item later on you only lose like 200 gold in the end but it's so worth it because you get your form so much quicker um obviously the boss that happened to shadow assassin and also new items and everything that's happening to shadow assassin came is making him stronger but also ross kane as well i've been seeing some ross canes as a tank Kane in the end uh going ghost blade into man immune because man immune is such a good item the problem with man immune is that you're kind of a little bit weak when you're stacking up man immune but when you fully stack that man immune you do so much damage especially with shadow assassin Kane. you could just one shot anyone on the entire map like he could do a lot of damage now it's been a while he's received about eight buffs to be honest with you uh but now i think now i feel like he's actually in a really really good spot shadow assassin Kane, uh where he can farm in the early game gain his stacks very very quickly obviously you need to make sure with shadow assassin kane that you actually get a lot of range champions because then you can get your stacks a lot quicker um you only need seven thousand souls now there's a cooldown reduction a few cooldown reductions as well um with the bust to his name and then you can get shadow assassin form a lot easier and then when you get shadow assassin form that's when he could be really really strong because he's so fast around the map he has so much mobility his ultimate can dodge skill shots and he can do so much damage um very very cool champion to play very fun as well um but i think i still think ross kane is is the same value as as shadow assassin you know ross kane is still very very strong it just kind of depends on the uh, situation of the game you know if you get a lot of media champions go for ross kane if you get a lot of range champions then go for a shadow assassin kane obviously the build is ever so uh, slightly different as well so you need to make sure that you have the correct build and the correct rune setups before you actually get into the game uh graze with the buff and also the changes that happened to uh bloodthirster and to be honest the changes that happened to shield bow because i don't think the shield bone of shield bone nurse were enough to be honest with you i think the big thing with graze now is actually bloodthirster giving you extra ad gives you 55 ad now which i think makes you know bloodthirster a really really good first item on champions like graze and even samira now as well i think graze is in a really really good spot right now because he has so many strong items that he can go bloodthirster shield bow double um double physical vamp items you also have uh black cleaver which is still a really strong item and you can carry on building crit afterwards you can go for uh lord domix regards to get the percent armor pen and also the crit afterwards and you can go for like ie last item uh the problem with graze is that obviously his range is very very uh low so you have to get up close and personal against some of these bruises and assassins which graze kind of struggle get struggles against but with more ad with bloodthirster it's definitely going to help him with the, his jungle clear in the early game and i think in general with the buffs that happened to his crit damage with his passive and also his um uh when you when building uh infinity edge i think makes graves in a pretty decent spot i think graves is pretty nice jungler to play cool range champion to play very easy to play as well uh you just have to make sure that you use your abilities correctly like trying to bounce your first ability uh, off the walls etc things like that uh right let's talk about a new jungler that i've added into the tier list and that is twitch um i've also put in ap twitch as well in this jungle build uh, i can show you very very quickly uh, but yeah, this is still the dual lane build, but then you have jungle twitch, which is the AP build. So Nash's Tooth, Riftmaker, Deathcap, Voice Staff, Leandris. This build, by the way, in jungle is very, very strong. I think AP Twitch in general is actually a lot stronger than AD Twitch at the moment. Um <clears throat> and like I said, Twitch Jungle is is really, really strong. Uh even though Twitch did get nerfed in this most recent patch, uh his passive now doesn't do as much damage to jungle monsters. Uh, he also got a little bit of less movement speed on his first ability. But to be fair, that doesn't matter. The one main thing about Twitch, what, what makes him, you know, relatively strong at the moment is his invisibility. I think a lot of players don't understand how to play against invisibility and how to play against Twitch. Twitch is a champion that only needs level two. All you do is like do red buff and then you can gank at level two. A lot of players do not see this coming. And if you can get a cheese gank and get a, you know, early lead for one of your laners, if you just get a, you know, a level two gank off, then you could be have a really really big advantage in the early game so yeah really cool jungler to play i've definitely tried it a few times as well still really strong even after this patch uh darius again got a little bit of a nerf to jungle monsters uh, he doesn't do as much damage to jungle monsters anymore but again darius is still pretty good in the jungle um his jungle clear speed's pretty decent his ganking potential is okay uh, again, he just, Darius just kind of falls into the same problems as in the Baron lane. Is that he kind of struggles to try and get into the back line and try to get into the uh, into the AD carries. Uh, again, Pantheon 
small buffs uh well sorry big buffs but again nothing really changes to pantheon he still runs into the same problems in the jungle same as the baron lane where you can try and combo you can try and gank and try and get a kill but again it's very very difficult so um yeah play pantheon at your own risk but i think the buffs are definitely a, a step in the right direction for pantheon i'd be interested to in see where he actually lies in terms of um you know other people's tier lists and also just in general you know the win rate and play rate and everything as well uh pike received quite a few buffs this patch uh i don't think pike pike jungle is a bit of like a niche pick kind of like twitch as well there's a few like niche picks here like pike twitch zed darius for example like these are all very niche picks that are not really junglers in a way but you can make them work and they they are possible to play uh but pike with some of the damage buffs that he got on his first ability and now the execution threshold going up on his ultimate uh, makes pike pretty good also his armor and mr now gets more uh more every single level so you're going to be a little bit tankier with pike but also you're going to be doing more damage as well which is always very nice for him and then mosty i think mosty is a champion that I haven't really tried out yet after the buffs i think the buffs are actually look kind of decent you know base ad in the early game uh, definitely helps his jungle clear speed and also cooldown on his first ability so i could definitely see mosty maybe going up in terms of a tier but again mosty just falls into the same problems as before his changes don't don't really do too much you know very easy kiteable very easy to just cc and just lock down he's very very squishy so yeah he's in a bit of a interest this interesting spot at the moment but i do think the mosty um is definitely going to be in a um in a better position than what he was before but i don't think it, he's warranted to move up into the a tier i think he just stays in the b tier for now uh into the mid lane uh no no changes here in the mid lane uh nothing at all you know champions like corky is still really strong in the mid lane lucian even after the buffs to ss reva um again still sits in the mid lane because you just kind of go for the same build with like man immune etc um everything has pretty much stayed exactly the same you know yone still in s plus tier even after the base attacks being nerfs again yone in mid lane is still very very strong because you can just kind of farm the wave for free you still have a shield on your second ability you have your knock up you have really great ganking um set up potential so yeah yone is still s plus tier in my opinion again akali still s plus tier as well even you know she got buffed in the mid lane which is kind of crazy uh the the buff to akali is more of a buff to baron lane akali than mid lane akali because a lot of the time you don't really play against ad champions in the mid lane so the armor in the early game doesn't really do too much unless you're against someone like an oriana that likes to auto attack you a lot or maybe some other champions like corky or lucian or something like that so you know, definitely helps Akali against some champions in the mid lane. And obviously, she gets more damage on her first ability, which is quite disgusting. Uh, Galio, nice buff to his ultimate. Still stays in S tier. Uh, nothing really changes with him. Uh, and then Pike as well. Again, a very niche pick in the mid lane. Um, kind of same with Jungle. The buffs that have happened to Pike have not really changed too much uh, with mid lane Pike. Um, and everything is pretty much the same. Yeah, I mean, nothing really to talk about in the mid lane. Uh, like I said, pretty much everything has stayed uh the exact same uh swain still say it stays in s tier i think swain could maybe move up into s plus tier swain is definitely like there's been some games where I, i've been like holy moly swain does a lot of damage like his healing is quite insane as well i think he's actually one of the most balanced releases i think i've seen in wild rifts i can't think of another champion that has had a more balanced release than swain because i don't think he's broken but I don't think he's like insanely weak either. Actually, that's an interesting point. I think Swain is actually most one of the most balanced releases in Wild Rifts. I'm trying to think of other champions that have been released recently that are like balanced where they haven't really had to change him at all. Oh. Yeah, I think it might be the most balanced release. I, I think genuinely think he is. Um I mean, there's been a lot of broken releases in Wild Rift, so maybe they're taking a step in the right direction. Obviously, with Orn and Volibear coming out, that's going to be really, really hype as well. Uh, but again, yeah, nothing really changed in mid lane. Everything is still the same. I right, dual lane. Uh, dual lane's an interesting one. Uh, there's so many champions in dual lane that can move up and down. It's actually ridiculous. Like, uh, it, it, it's so difficult to do a Dragon Lane tier list right now because there are so many champions that I feel like can be stronger so many champions that also can be weaker as well there's a lot of changes as you can see with the dual lane some of you might be surprised with Jin, but i'll explain that in a little, in a little bit um but first s plus tier um high start even after nerf she's still insanely strong uh, i have to say it outright um even though her base attack speed got nerfed which i mean 
the the only changes that happened with Kaiser in the dual lane is base attacks being nursed in the early game, which to be honest, Kaiser was never really supposed to be strong in the early game anyway. So base attacks being nerfed doesn't really mean too much. And you go for Phantom Dancer as the first item anyway, which you get free attack speed. So that's totally fine. Uh, and then some damage to the second ability, which to be honest with Kaiser, I understand that they nerfed the damage to the second ability because now you can get the second ability evolved pretty much for free. Uh, you don't need to build ability power anymore. You just get it after you build the third item. So I understand why they nerfed the second ability. And then the other one is a jungle monster nerf to the first ability. So actually, if you think about it, Kaisa hasn't really changed at all. Obviously, enough to Phantom Dancer, there's enough to Shield Bow, but both the items are still insanely strong. Uh, you still get your first ability vault before first strike with Phantom Dancer. Then you can go for Shield Bow, second item. You're still really strong. You still do a lot of attacks. You still do insane burst damage. Kaisa is still in the exact same spot. She's still really, really strong. Definitely uh, carry on playing Kaisa uh, even after this patch. Uh, Tristana. Tristana's uh, still, in my opinion, the, the best dual lane carry. Um, I think she was the best dual... Actually, no, probably Kaisa was the best dual lane carry last patch. Um, but Tristana, definitely one of the best, if not the best dual lane carry right now. Um, she's so, so damn strong. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, she gains range for free. She has a huge amount of attack speed, which you can also get improved with Phantom Dancer. You have a huge massive amount of burst damage with your uh, third ability and also your ultimate. You're so great at peeling back from assassins and uh, bruisers again because of your ultimate. It, this champion is absolutely disgusting. Has it all. Has mobility as well and has, um, you know, ways to jump around with her second ability. She has everything. Corky as well. Really, really strong still. Um, you can go for crit Corky now with SS Reaver if you want to. But I think the Man Immune Trinity Force build is still better. Uh, Ezreal, I've actually moved up into S plus tier because of the recent buffs that have happened to Ezreal. Base attack speed in the early game is really, really nice. A little bit extra damage on Mystic Shot, which is really, really good. And also the ultimate going down by 10 seconds in the late game, which is also very, very big for Ezreal. Means you can use that more often. Uh, I think Ezreal has always been a good AD carry to play. The reason why he was kind of not that great in the previous patch is because he doesn't really use Shield Bow or any of these crit items. But now that Shield Bow and some of these items have got nerfed in, nerfed in terms of shielding, and Ezreal is still a very safe, very easy to play AD carry, especially with the boss now, I think he sits very, very nicely in the S plus tier, uh, in my opinion. I'm moving down to the S tier. I think this is the first time a champion's actually got buffed and I moved them down. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I, I think I overreacted a little bit with Vayne being S plus tier. Um, Vayne's a weird one because Vayne's in a bit of a weird spot where her laning phase is super, super weak and the item build at the moment is a little bit weird. It's like you go Blade of the Rune King into Phantom Dancer and then you go for like Shield Bow. But then you can also go for a third attack speed item if you want to, but it's not really ideal because before you would go for like Blade of Rune King, Wit's End into Phantom Dancer and it'll be pretty good. If you go for that now, you don't feel as strong in my opinion. You don't feel as strong. And the one thing is, is that Vayne kind of struggles now in the 1v1 duels against uh, champions that build Phantom Dancer as well because they have, they have more attack speed and they can do more burst damage. And also because they have Shield Bow. So I think Shield Bow is maybe the, the it's still a good second item to buy. You can maybe buy a uh, third item to buy. Sorry, you can maybe buy Nash's Tooth. But yeah, Vayne's in a bit of a weird spot. I don't think Vayne deserves to be S plus tier. I think her early game is way too weak. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Zaya stayed the same. Pretty much nothing has changed with Zaya. Varus again stayed the same. Nothing's really changed with them. Um, I mean, Varus got a little bit of a nerf this patch, but um, Varus changes doesn't really mean too much, to be honest with you. Um, still a really, really strong champion. You still got AP Varus. You can still go AD Varus, Lethality. Both the builds are very, very strong. Zeri hasn't really changed at all as well. Still pretty much exactly the same. I think the shield actually hurts Zeri the most, uh, the shield bow shield. Because it's such a strong item and it's such a core item for Zeri. Um, where it probably affects her the most. But yeah, she's still strong. Still S tier. Uh, Jin. Jin, is, um, Jin was definitely S plus tier last patch. Don't get me wrong. Jin was definitely S plus tier last patch. Uh, I definitely underrated the changes that happened to Jin last patch. He was definitely still uh, definitely one of the strongest AD carries. Now the problem with Jin is that he loses 1% damage every single, um, every single level. Now this doesn't mean too much... For Jin in the early game. Jin early game is still very strong with collector first item, infinity edge, etc. 
But now Jin, Jin's damage in the later stages of the game is now not as strong as what it was before. When you hit level 50 now with Jin, okay, which is very unlikely. Say, for example, you hit level 10 with Jin. You lose 10% damage now for Jin, which is a big, big number. And you lose a lot of damage now for Jin, which is kind of big for Jin because Jin is a champion that kind of struggles a lot against tanks and also against bruises sometimes. Obviously, last patch was a bit different because he was just building, he was just dealing a bunch of burst damage anyway. But Jin's one problem has always been bruises bruises and tanks you don't really do a lot of damage against tanks and bruises and it's still kind of the same thing you know it's still the exact same thing you need to get a lead in the early game you need to get quite a big of a lead in the early game to try and snowball with your items like collector and affinity edge and try and deal more damage to them bruises and tanks if you don't and if you stay even i don't think he's as strong as ezreal corky kaiser and tristana to be honest with you i mean yes he could deal a huge amount of burst damage but yeah i'm not really too sure uh lucia god i could move lucian to a tier lucian is just awful right now i i don't know what's happened with lucian actually i think i might lose it my, i think i might move lucian down into uh lucian down into at i'm just making note of it just to make sure that i remember um but yeah i'm moving lucian down to a tier for sure um i mean even with the ss reaver buff lucian just feels awful right now i don't know what it is with lucian but you just can't do anything against these hyper carries like all of these carries that i'm seeing in the s tier right now i would much rather play than lucian like, Lucian is just in a really, really bad spot. I mean, his early game is still strong. Cracker Slayer is still strong. But he just doesn't have a good item build right now. You know, SS Reaver, yes, it got buffed. Yes, it makes him a little bit stronger. But I just don't feel like he's that strong. But yeah. That's just me. Caitlyn's still really strong. Still the same. Jinx still the same. I moved Samira up. Uh, I don't think Samira deserves to be an A tier. And especially with the changes to Bloodthirster now. I think Samira is definitely very, very strong. You've got the double vamp items, which are very strong on Samira. Shield Bow plus Bloodthirster. You also have Infinity Edge, which is also very, very strong. So I think Samira in general is a very, very strong carry to play uh, in the dual lane. Obviously, a little bit more difficult to play than other dual lane carries because you have to make sure that you combo a lot, make sure you auto attack and you land abilities and you kind of mix and match with your abilities to try and get up to S rating as soon as possible. But when you do, you do an insane amount of damage and you are very, very strong. But yeah, Samira, S tier. Uh, Draven still stays in A tier. I mean, all these champions still stay in A tier. Um, Misfortune is the only one that got buffed. But again, I think Misfortune still stays in A tier. I don't think Misfortune is near enough as strong as what she was, um, what she was like, you know, a few... Oh, about a year ago now you know even with the buffs that have come in ss3 misfortune feels okay uh but again not that strong uh ash twitch draven obviously this is ad twitch um but yeah still pretty still pretty okay action b obviously bear in the mid lane and then center down in c tier right last one we move on to supports um i don't think anything has changed in the s plus tier um i think all these champions are still really really strong in the s plus tier karma nami lulu Lulu Yumi, especially because the meta we're in, we're in at the moment still uh, with hyper carry, AD carries, all these supports are still very, very strong. Uh, obviously, Pike support got a pretty huge buff this patch. Uh, I was tempted to move Pike up into S plus tier, but I do still prefer to go for um, Enchanters instead of Pike. But if you want a really, really strong, um, you know, solo carry support, um, then 100% pick Pike because Pike is disgustingly strong right now um, because of the changes that happened and the buffs that happened to him. Uh, in the most recent patch so pike really really good spot uh and ricard have moved back up into s tier uh even though ricard did receive really really big heavy nerfs a few patches ago it's kind of like it's kind of balanced itself out now in a way where people are finding like different builds different ways to build uh ricard people are going like imperial mandate now which will give you a little bit more damage on your abilities and also your knockups. So I think there's different ways to play Rakan. And I think Rakan still has a lot of playmaking potential. And I still think that he's very, very strong. Um, really good at shielding. Really good at healing. Laning phase can also be pretty good as well. Again, the playmaking potential is a big thing about Rakan, which is why he's uh, he's still there. Galio with his ultimate being reduced, ultimate cooldown being reduced, is actually a pretty big no a pretty big buff, sorry, uh, to support Galio because support Galio is all about getting in the front line, using your ultimate to protect your team. And if you can have that up more often, then it's absolutely great. Um, other champions are still really strong in S tier. You know, Lux with Protect and Chant is still very strong. Senna is still very good. Janna, which is going to be my next A to Z guide happening very, very soon. Uh, and then you have Set. Even though Set got buffed, Set is still a niche support. But yeah, you have these niche supports down here. Shen, Nasa, Set. Morgana, obviously Bliss Crank is still down there. But yeah, Seraphine, Sona, Brom, Soraka, Ash, all of them were okay. Uh, Sona is definitely not broken, by the way. Don't believe other people. I don't know how people can say that Sona is broken, but hey, 
we live in a crazy world anyway that is everything for the tier list for patch 4.2a as always if you want to check out the website the website is wild refire i do all the builds and everything over on wild refire i probably need to do a rune tier list soon as well because i have changed some of the uh runes around um i'll probably do a rune tier list soon like an update on the rune tier list um but yeah we'll have to wait and see about that one anyway appreciate you all tuning into the video see you all very soon uh hopefully you enjoy your rest of, rest of your day and i'll see you all in the next water video peace